Hello, and thank you for joining us. Um, so my name is Lisa Kingsbury. I am the Director of Community Engagement here at the Contra Costa School of Performing Arts. And this tour is specifically looking at our online platform. It is called the Summit Learning Platform, uh, but at school, we just call it the PLP, shortened up for Personalized Learning Platform. So uh, today we're gonna teach you how to get to the PLP. Uh, so once you become a parent and a student on campus, all you have to do is go to Quick Links under Quick Links. It's the very second one. And you just click on it and you go straight to summitlearning.org. Uh, we quite often have our students also bookmark summitlearning.org so they can get to it on their Chromebooks super easily. Uh, you can also get to it off our parents tab and also off our student tab. So there's lots of places to find the link to Summit Learning. All right, so uh, the best way to talk about this is to actually go live. And in order to do that, I actually brought a friend with me. Uh, this is Katherine Cooper. Hi, I'm Katherine Cooper, and I'm a senior here at SPA. And Katherine has been with us since the founding of our school, and now her younger brother has also joined us, uh, Samuel. We enjoy having all Coopers. So we're going to bounce out of our presentation and go over to Katherine's what's called the PLP. So Katherine, take it away. What's this page? All right. So the first thing you see when you pop into the PLP is the announcements page. This is where your teachers can put any announcements to do with your classes. Like, for example, you can see my teacher, Ms. Hyatt, put an announcement for our economics and AP government classes telling me where I should be in my schoolwork. The next screen you will see is the weekly view. So here you can put goals for the week. So here I have put a goal for my English class and for my government class. And I can just check those off whenever they're done. So I know exactly where I am and what I need to be doing for the week. Uh, so Catherine is a good sport um, in putting in this goal, but our students do goals in different ways. So Catherine also uses a different version of goal setting. What do you do? What I do is I do it all, all on paper. I have many pads of post-it notes and a bulletin board in front of me. And I write my goals down on my post-its and then I put them on my bulletin board. And then when I'm done with the goal, I just take it off the board and put it in my little box. Beautiful executive functioning. Um, so with our younger students, we are really stressing using the online platform, but many of our students like to use paper like Catherine and like me. Um, so some students use a planner, some students use a bulletin board, but there also is this online platform. So anything you do is fine. All right, the next view is the most important one. Yes, the most important view of all is the year view. It's kind of like the table of contents for the year. On this screen, you'll see two things. You'll see focus areas and you'll see projects. So here on this screen, I see many different colors and these color can can we please film that part again <laughs> i'm tripping over my words <laughs> absolutely so we will we'll we'll cut from where we ended with um the weekly screen and so then i will in fact i'll just go here mm -hmm. I'll, I'll bounce right back okay okay we have focus areas and projects and they have colors and i'll tell you what the those colors mean. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, and so next we have the year screen, possibly the most important screen. Yes, the most important screen of them all is the year screen. On this screen, you'll see the two things that make up your grade, your power focus areas and your projects. You'll also see underneath the power focus areas, there are additional focus areas, and those are a smaller part of your grade. Um, on this screen, we have three different colors. No, four different colors. There are three colors on my screen. There are four colors. There is blue, which shows projects and focus areas that are in progress or haven't been seen yet. There is green, which means something has been completed or mastered. There is yellow, which means something that is in progress or it needs reviewing. This is mainly to do with projects. And there is red, which means something is off track when it needs to be looked at. You can have these colors on your focus areas or your projects. Generally, you don't see yellow in focus areas unless you're almost there to passing the focus area. So 
Let's dive in, shall we? Sure. Let's look at a completed project first. So okay. English short story Splendor. So on the project page, you will see everything you need to do for your project. This includes checkpoints and final products. In a checkpoint, it's like some, it's an activity or something you need to learn to help build into your final project. For example, with this one, this is a story breakdown. For our project, we had to write an analysis of a short story. And so for our checkpoints, we wrote story breakdowns to help us with the analysis. And eventually we did practice analysis, as you'll see in the later checkpoints. Also in the projects, when your project has been completed and turned in, you can see your grades. So the way we grade here at SPA is we have individual cognitive skills. For example, theme slash central idea. And so for each cog skill, you get a certain number grade. Now these grades shift as you move throughout your grades. So when I entered SPA as an eighth grader, a three was a C, a four was a B, and a five was an A. Now that I'm a senior, a five has become a C because the grades have shifted. Now a five is a C and a six is a B and a seven is an A. So congratulations on this project. Thank you. Why don't we look at a project that is in um, progress? Yes, so we'll go, let's do that. We'll go to AP Governments. So as you can see, this project is red. Now the whole project itself isn't red. One of the checkpoints is red. When a checkpoint, when your teacher turns a checkpoint red, it means that you've either missed something or you need to severely rework your work there. So for this checkpoint, I had missed a few sections and I needed to recomplete them. Now this doesn't stay red forever. Once you fix the work, you can request feedback again, and then your teacher can go in and turn it green. So I'm just waiting on that. And soon that checkpoint will be a lovely green as well. Excellent. <laughs> um, and it looks like this project has two different uh, final products. Can you tell us about that? It does. So sometimes for projects, you can have two different final products that each assess different cog skills. So for example, my podcast will have different cog skills than my FRQ. So the FRQ is an in-class writing assignment and the podcast is making a more creative final product that demonstrates like oral speaking and analysis. Awesome. All right, why don't we go back and take a look at a focus area and have you tell us what's involved in a focus area. Yes, so a focus area, it's like the building blocks of all the knowledge you need for your products, projects. So for this one, legislative branch powers and roles, um, I used this knowledge from the focus area. I'm currently using it in my government project. And in each focus area, you'll see um, objectives. And those are different, um, they're like little summaries of everything you're going to learn. So for example, objective one is describe the enumerated and implied powers and functions of Congress. So that's one section. And then another objective is to identify and describe the design of the House and the Senate, as well as the implications. And so that's another section of the focus area. And so in each objective, you have different resources that will help you learn the knowledge and help you take notes on it. And once you view a resource, a little check mark appears next to it. So once you've taken notes on all of the objectives, you can request the content assessment. Also, before you do that, um, one thing I forgot to mention is at the very top of the focus area, you can see a diagnostic assessment. Now you can take this assessment to see where you are in your knowledge of the subject already. So if you're missing certain questions and you're getting other questions right, you know, okay, I need to study this objective more and I um, need to study this objective, but not as much because I already have a lot of prior knowledge. And so after you study all the objectives and you take the diagnostic and you feel secure in your knowledge, you can request to take the focus area. Now, I, t I believe, I yes, I took this focus area once and I mastered it, but you can take these focus areas as many times as you need. This is not based on like failing. This is a mastery based system. So for 
another example for this focus area, I took it twice because the first time I didn't fully understand all the concepts and I needed to go back and review. So I went and I took more notes and I restudied and then I was able to take it again and now it's green. Good job. So for this focus area down here, the red one, um, why it is red, it, that's not because I took it and I like very severely failed. As you can see, I haven't taken it at all yet. So this blue line that's on the year view shows the date. So right now we're in the middle of October and the blue line reflects that. As things are due and they pass, then the blue line passes them, they turn red if they haven't been completed, if it's a focus area. So I didn't do that one yet <laughs> and the blue line passed it. So now I need to go back and take it. That doesn't mean if it's red, that doesn't mean I can never take it again and I just have to sit there with that red on my conscience. No, no, no. I can go back and take it even after the blue line has passed it because we are focused on mastery. So once I've taken notes and all that material and I've done the diagnostic, I can still take that assessment and then pass it and make it as green as the rest of the focus areas on my PLP. Exactly. <laughs> I think I will show them. So one of the things that, um, because Catherine has been with us uh, since eighth grade, we can actually go back in the PLP and we can look at previous years. So this mm -hmm. is her screen from last year and you can see everything is green. So yes. everything is great. So even if things are currently red right now, like she showed you, uh, it doesn't always stay that way. You go and you finish it and then everything turns green. All right, let's look at our last screen for today. So this is the progress screen. On the progress screen, you can see updates of what you have done, and you can also see notes from mentor meetings. So one thing we have here at SPA are every student had a designated mentor. For mine, that's my teacher, Ms. Hyatt. And so we will have certain meeting times where we can go and talk about what I've gotten done for the past week and what I, what I need to move in the direction of completing. Like um, in my past meeting, you can see we talked about finishing my constitution checkpoint. And so uh, my teacher wrote that down in my progress tab. And now I can go over and see, oh yeah, that's the things we talked about and the things I need to do. You can also see down below there, you can see what you've submitted and if you've gotten feedback on your different checkpoints and your projects. Also on the progress tab, you can see your current grades. So in my section, in the economics class, you remember that um, red, uh, yes, it was a red focus area. So in this, I don't get a failing grade. It just says off track. I don't think, uh, Ms. Kingsbury, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we dip below a C here at SPA with grading. It just says incomplete or off track. Yeah, right. so it just says incomplete or off track. So. Um, that means that when I complete that focus area, it will no longer stay off track and it will reflect the current grade I have. Uh, and right now, Catherine, your government class says NA, and that's because? That's because we haven't had our first project completed yet. When we get scores on our cognitive skills, that's the first time a letter grade is reflected in our grades. Keeping up with power focus areas also raises your grades, but until you have a project graded, it doesn't reflect a letter grade. True. And I think to show you a complete example, we'll look at Catherine's grades from last year. Um, mm -hmm. And if we go into a grade, let's look at environmental science. You can see how the grade is distributed in my, um, if you click into the certain project. So in my, you can see the percentage that my projects and the power focus areas and the additional focus areas all added to my final grade, which was a 96%. Also in this tab, you can see all of the grades you've gotten on all of your different COG skills. And you'll notice some of them are listed twice. Whenever your teacher tests a cognitive skill two times, you, the only grade that is reflected is the highest one. So if you score kind of low on your first cognitive skill and you score higher on the next one, that's the only one that will be reflected in your final grade. Exactly. Again, so building on that mastery. Exactly, it's a mastery system. It's not an averaging of scores, but it's giving Catherine the benefit of the fact that she mastered the skill at an even higher level. And now it's giving her that higher score. Yes. Exactly. Well done.
All right, we're gonna jump out of this screen and go back to our presentation. Thank you, Catherine. Um, so to recap, we're just gonna talk about what we saw on those different screens. So the very first screen we went to was called the announcement page. And this is brand new to the PLP this year. Uh, we're very grateful for it. It's another way for teachers to communicate with their students. Um, so in particular, students should pay attention to this at our school during asynchronous days. So days that their student is not, and the student and teacher are not live together. Uh, this is where some, some really good information exists. So that's the announcements page. The next one we went to was the week view, and this is the goal setting page. So this is where Catherine showed you that she had one goal set. This particular student has two goals set. Um, and goal setting is something that we're working on in terms of executive functioning with our middle school students in particular. Um, and we find that our high school students tend to have their own systems. Sometimes it's online, sometimes it's offline. Both ways of setting goals are perfectly great. Then the third view we looked at, um, which Catherine and I both said was the most important one, this is where all of your curriculum lives. This is where you're gonna spend 90% of your day when you're online with the PLP. This is where you can see projects, focus areas. You can see the content for the entire school year. So like Catherine said, this is the table of contents for each and every class that you have. Um, so in this particular screen that we're looking at right now, this is an eighth grade student and we can see those colors again. And they're very much like a stoplight. So a green means go, means good. You've turned it in, you've mastered it. If there was a yellow, which I think there is actually one down there at the bottom of the screen, the yellow means slow down, just like at a stoplight. It means there's some feedback you need to address. There might be something you need to do a little bit better in order to really master that project. And then a red is stop, just like in a stop sign. It means something is overdue. Or like Catherine mentioned, you may have missed something or skipped something in your checkpoint and your teacher is asking you to go back to reflect and then resubmit for better feedback for it to eventually turn green. So the idea is that anything that is red, anything that is yellow gets resubmitted and turn that green color, which means you're good to go for everything. So that's the most important screen, which is the year view. Then there was the progress view. And this is where on the left-hand side is an activity screen where you can see the interplay in between teachers and students. You can see when a student has re requested feedback for something and you can see when a teacher has given feedback for that same item. And again, it's color coded, just like the other screen. So if it is green, that means it's submitted, it was turned in, everything's great, we're good to move forward, or you passed a focus area. And if it's red, it means let's stop, we need you to go back and figure out what's going on. And then the second thing on the screen is grades. So where your current grades live. And like Catherine mentioned, if it's off track, that means that you have something that you need to do. You've got some feedback, You've got an overdue project, you need to meet with your teacher, go to office hours, talk to your mentor um, and get that work finished. Because as Catherine mentioned, um, our lowest grade is a C minus, which we're gonna cover in just a minute. Um, so in terms of a breakdown, and Catherine showed this to you a little bit when we pushed into her environmental science grade. Uh, so in English history and science, projects are worth 80%, power focus areas 14%, and additional focus areas, 6%. Additional focus areas are important content, just not as important as a power focus area. Um, and so with an additional, it's really um, to make sure that you've got all the information you need to make sure you get the best grade possible on that project. It's also very hard to get an A in a class if you don't do the additionals. Um, you literally would have to ace everything else. In math, the grading is slightly adjusted. Projects, which are really, um, uh, larger math units are worth 80%. Power focus areas are 10. They don't have additional focus areas because they have portfolio problems, uh, which is like a series of activities and um, sort of like word problems that you're working on to make sure that you understand the material to execute the unit assessment as well as you can. So finally, um, the last part of our grade breakdown, um, our A, B, and C grades are pretty traditional. So 100 to 90 is an A, 89 to um, 80 is a B, 79 to 70 is a C, where a 70, a C minus is our lowest grade. Everything else under that um, becomes an off track or an incomplete. Um, and you can really get an off track for three reasons. Uh, number one, you have an overdue or missing project and it's red because you haven't turned it in. Um, your cognitive skills are below 70. So you may have finished a project. You might have written that essay. You might've done that podcast, but when you turned it in, it was unfortunately not 
up to the standard for mastery and passing. So it's being sent back to you so that you can resubmit. And the whole idea is to resubmit until you get to that mastery level. Uh, and then finally, if you are behind in a focus area, uh, so like we saw on Catherine's screen with that one red focus area in economics, it's showing off track right now. But that means tomorrow she can take that focus area and if she passes, she will be on track um, and that red will go away and that off track message will also go away. All right, thank you very much for taking the time to come with us. Um, and I wanna say a special thank you to my partner. So thank you, Catherine Cooper for joining me and letting us use your PLP as an example. Uh, if you have further questions about our online platform, uh, feel free to contact me. My information is down below. You can also go to our website, um, the tab that says who we are under administration. Um, you can email me or you can email our director of curriculum and instruction. Her name is Brianna Shavar. And she can also give you all the information about the Summit Learning Platform and what we're doing in our academic courses. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.